In this example, we're given the graph of a line and asked to find the slope of the line. The slope of a line is the rate at which the output variable, often y, is changing with respect to the input variable, often x. When looking at the graph of a line, the slope indicates how the line is slanted from left to right. Notice how from left to right this line is going downhill, and therefore the slope is negative. If the line was going uphill from left to right, the slope would be positive. There are several formulas that we can use to express a slope. Looking below, the slope m equals the change in output divided by the change in input. And if the output variable is y and the input variable is x, we can say the slope equals the change of y divided by the change of x. When looking at the graph of a line, we can also say the slope equals the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. So because we're given the graph of the line, there are two main ways to find the slope. One way would be to select two points on the line, determine the vertical change and horizontal change from one point to the next point, and then find this quotient. The other way would be to use the coordinates of the two points and determine the change in output or change in y by determining the difference in the y coordinates given by y sub 2 minus y sub 1, and then determining the change in the input or change in x by determining the change in the x coordinates which is x sub 2 minus x sub 1. In this video, we'll show both. So the first step is to find two convenient points on the line, for example, this point, and let's say this point here. Let's go ahead and find the coordinates of these two points, but we need to be careful about the scaling of the axes. On the horizontal axis, there's a tick mark every 20 units. On the vertical axis, there's a tick mark every 200 units. So the coordinates of this point here would be 0, 300. This point would have coordinates negative 90, 700. And now let's determine the vertical change and horizontal change. So starting at the point on the left, notice how we'd have to go down. Let's be careful about the number of units here. Each tick mark is 200, and therefore each grid mark is 100 and therefore the vertical change is down 400, which means the vertical change is negative 400. Because we went down, the vertical change is negative. If we were to go up, the vertical change would be positive. And from here, we have to go right. Again, being careful about the scale, there's a tick mark every 20 units, and therefore each good mark is 10 units. So we have to go right 90 units, and therefore the horizontal change is positive 90. If we were to go left, the horizontal change would be negative. So now we know the slope m equals the vertical change divided by the horizontal change, which for this line would be negative 400 divided by 90, or negative 490ths. We need to simplify this fraction, though. 490 share a common factor of 10, so we'll divide the numerator and denominator by 10 which gives us a slope of negative 40 ninths. This indicates that the output, or y, decreases by 40 each time the input, or x, increases by 9. Now let's also find the slope using the slope formula here. So to keep things organized, let's call this ordered pair x sub 1 comma y sub 1, and this ordered pair x sub 2 comma y sub 2. So the slope m equals, again, we'll have the quantity y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by the quantity x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So y sub 2 minus y sub 1 is 300 minus 700, and x sub 2 minus x sub 1 is 0 minus negative 90. Simplifying, 300 minus 700 is negative 400. 0 minus negative 90 is 0 plus 90, or 90. We know this simplifies to negative 40 ninths. This slope also tells us if we were to select any point on the line and then go down 40 units and write 9 units, we can determine another point on the line. I hope you found this helpful.